Okay, so obviously I'm not in class today. Uh, you guys should have this. Uh, I picked this up before you left if you didn't have class with me today. Uh, <coughs> blocks uh, Period 6 and 7 should have gotten it in class and had time to do it in class. Periods 1, you only had half an hour. And uh, period 3, uh, you didn't get it all unless you came and got it as instructed through Jupiter grades. All right, so they kind of construct a cladogram. You have to remember, you have to ask yourself, what is a cladogram, right? And remember, we talked about it being a, a, the tree, and you have notes on it. I sent you the PDF, but I haven't made the video yet uh, explaining it. And we're going to have time in class tomorrow to go over the details. Uh, the obviously the cladograms in the in the PDF of the PowerPoint are much more complex, so this cladogram should be fairly easy to do. Um, what you need to do is uh, let's look at the first procedure. The first checkpoint you got to make, uh, you you have to consider, is you have to talk about uh, characteristics. And in a cladogram, remember I told you that uh, here is the oldest, uh, in, as far as relative time goes. This is older. These are newer. So time goes forward. As time goes on, you have new development of new traits. We call those traits derived derived traits and these derived traits then let us know uh, help us identify how closely related these different organisms are or in this case modes of transportation so as you're looking at these derived traits here you're looking you're going to try to place these in the appropriate slots based on these development of new mo uh, characteristics and of course these are the modes of transportation now the out group is considered the group that is not that does not have any of these traits the group that's outside of this what we would call a clade <coughs> a clade is a group of organisms that share a common ancestor so you can find a clade you can define a clade as any one of these nodes right so you could I could circle a clade using um, red I could circle a clade here I could call this a clade all right or I could call uh, notice that it's sharing this particular node or I could I could uh, call this a clade and that's sharing this particular node here, right? So that's a common ancestor they share. Or I could call a clade, uh, this group here could be a clade, and that would be sharing that common ancestor there. So a clade is just a group of organisms that share a common ancestor, and we're gonna move on and just do this and have fun doing it, and try to have fun doing this, and see if you can come up with the right answer, and we'll discuss it uh, tomorrow. Now, when we're looking at the instructions, you're saying you're, you're a scientist and you can read it. I'm not going to read it to you. You draw each, uh, each of the animals illustrated below uh, on a separate sheet of paper to create your cladogram. The animals are on, on the back of the sheet. Or you can cut them out and paste them. Do not cut them out and paste them since it's on the back of the sheet. Now, when, you, when you're, uh, you're not going to be judged on your art, but have some fun with it. Now consider the following characteristics when designing your cladogram. Okay, so you need to, when you're designing a cladogram, this is a cladogram to remind you. When you're designing a cladogram, divide the animals into two groups depending on how, on if they possess vertebra, for instance, or backbone. Divide those uh, with vertebra according to whether they, uh, they do or do not have, uh, give live birth, have babies, not eggs. Divide those with live birth depending on whether they possess opposable thumbs. And return to your uh, return to your uh, invertebrates, right? It's invertebrates, so that would be things without vertebra, right? Invertebrates, things without vertebra. Vertebra are backbones, so they have to have bones. Divide them according to the presence of an exoskeleton, whether they have an exoskeleton or not. And then divide uh, those with exoskeletons according to whether they possess wings or not. So if they have exoskeletons, they possess wings or not. So what are what are kind of our characteristics? First, we would have let's discuss this. First, we would have uh, vertebra, 
So that's a backbone. So you'd have to have bones to have a backbone, right? So vertebra. I'm just going to put vert for short. Uh, you have the next thing you're trying to do is uh, live birth. And then the next characteristic is divide those into uh, with uh, live birth depending on if they possess opposable thumbs. Uh, and then return to your invertebrates. Go back and decide whether the invertebrates uh, whether the invertebrates have an exoskeleton. Or, um, uh, and if not, yes or no, whether they, they can divide that exoskeleton to those, whether they possess wings or not. So these are the derived traits, right? It's live birth, vertebrate, opposable thumbs, exoskeleton wings. Those are kind of the, the, the characteristics we're going to be looking for. So here are your organisms. And um, when we look at <coughs> these characteristics, which ones of these have these characteristics and which don't. Um, now, some of you may not know. Now, normally, normally I would say look it up. But just for the sake of time and the fact that I'm not there to help you, I uh, encourage you to look things up always and, and know the difference. Um, let's just say that... Um, these three here, I should tell you that these three here don't have a vertebra. They don't have bones. Neither does an octopus. Not about an octopus is also an invertebrate. It doesn't have a bone. It doesn't have backbone. Uh, snakes do, believe it or not. Some people think they don't have bones, but they do. So do toads and owls and chimpanzees and eagles and, and a hippopotamus and an elephant. <coughs> now, of these uh, invertebrates, those things that don't have uh, backbones, right? No bones, really. Uh, you're going to look at an octopus as being the only one that doesn't have an exoskeleton. An octopus is squishy. It doesn't have an outs hard exoskeleton. And I'm sure a lot of you have squished insects, so you know that the insects here do indeed have exoskeletons. And I don't know if you know this or not, but spiders also have an exoskeleton. What that means is they have a skeleton on the outside, so they have a hard uh, They have a hard shell. All three of these do. Uh, they don't have a backbone. Uh, they they don't have an internal skeleton, so of course they're not going to have a backbone, right? And an octopus is again very squishy, no bones, so it can actually squeeze through very small, tiny openings. They do have beaks, but they're not made of bone. All right, so that takes care of, I think, all of these that I would expect that you'd be able to, to know. You know, I think you should know this, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I find sometimes the most incredibly, uh, incredible things that people don't know. But frogs do lay eggs, right? And snakes lay eggs. Snakes are reptiles, and, uh, you know, and they lay eggs. Uh, the, obviously, the uh, birds lay eggs. They don't have live birth right uh, but and so do owls so owls and eagles they're gonna lay eggs so I just to make sure everyone knows what each characteristic each of these animals have now the hard part you're gonna have is trying to choose uh, trying to choose what is gonna be your out group the one that is the least like all the rest right which is the the least like all the rest and then and that could be you know it could be something that doesn't have any of the characteristics that you would want and then which of these then have all the have more of those characteristics and more and more until until you have a characteristic until you have a an organism that has all the characteristics right so one that doesn't have any is going to be outside and those that have more and more of them are going to be on the inside further and further into the center of these rings and I'm going to go ahead and tell you to just kind of do this Venn diagram you've, you've seen Venn diagrams before I'm sure um, let's go ahead and draw one real quick and you go ahead and draw a Venn diagram 
And anything outside the circle doesn't have these characteristics, right? Everything inside the circle has these characteristics, whatever those characteristics are. <coughs> All right, so, so if we look at the derived traits and we plot them, on a Venn diagram, and that's what you're looking at here. It's a Venn diagram that shows you everything within the circle has that particular trait or characteristic. So everything in this characteristic, everything that has a vertebra in the or within the orange circle, notice that everything with an opposable, opposable thumb is within the vertebrate as well. Everything that gives live birth is in the vertebrate. But also, not everything that has an opposable, not you should see that everything that's outside the circle does not have the characteristic that's inside the circle. So stuff out here doesn't have a vertebra. And any creature that you place in here uh, does not does have uh, a vertebra but doesn't give live birth. Anything in here has opposable thumbs does give live birth, but the stuff out here doesn't have opposable thumbs. The stuff inside does. So just to reiterate, the stuff on the edit, everything within the circle has whatever the, those characteristics are. But that circle, that, that border in the circle defines stuff that's new, the derived trait, that everything within the circle contains, but stuff outside the circle doesn't. So in this case, the exoskeleton is everything inside it has an exoskeleton, but anything outside it doesn't. And of course, wing anything in this has wings and an exoskeleton, but the exos anything in the in the yellow here doesn't have uh, wings, but does have the exoskeleton. All right, so as you're placing these, and this is a kind of Venn diagram you need to create, and you would create it from that list. Now, I created the Venn diagram for you just to introduce you to the idea of cladistics and how to do it. Uh, so you need to take that list of animals, this, these animals here. I've already told you what, uh, which animals have what, um, what derived traits. These are all derived traits. In other words, traits that are, uh, that are not ancient. They're new. They've, been, they've evolved recently. All right? They separate. Now, the first group, and you can see here, what derived characters did you use in the, di in the cladogram? And here are the derived characters. So that, that kind of answers your question there. Uh, which organism would be considered the outgroup? Now, that's something for you to consider. What organism of these listed does not have any of the derived traits and is, in fact, by itself, um, would be out here and defining the outgroup for comparison's sake. Now, it doesn't have any of these characteristics, these derived traits, but it does have ancient characteristics that sh they these all these organisms share. For instance, uh, that all these organisms are all multicellular, so that's a that's a trait. Uh, this organism that's out here would be multicellular, uh, but that organism wouldn't have vertebra or an exoskeleton, and and so you look at this and try to find a an, an animal, an organism that doesn't have any of these derived traits. So once you've placed all these animals in their particular circles, be careful. I'm going to grade you on this. I want to see the right answer when I, when I look at it on Thursday. So find the correct placement of all these animals within the circles. Your next job is to take this, uh, this Venn diagram and create a tree diagram, which is the cladogram that we're, we're talking about. So you take and um, look at a line that represents the base of the tree. And then what what organisms would have branched off of that? And then maybe what organisms would have branched off of that? And maybe there'd be another branch here. Uh, you know, you're going to have to come up with the branches and the common ancestors that they share. For instance, um, this organism obviously would be at the far end of it, right? It would be here before any derived traits. At any one of these spots, you're going to have to draw your derived trait. So at this stage, there'd be your first derived trait, whatever that is. Let's call that A. And then at this stage, it'd be another derived trait, B. So everything after this has, has that trait, A. Okay, so any organism here, 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 anywhere along here 
has this trait A. Now, this is just an example. You're going to have to draw your own. And then and we'll draw it together and the correct one uh, or a correct one tomorrow. And you might have the correct one, but we're going to draw it tomorrow. But here it would be A. So anything that comes along after that would be would have this character. And any, char any organism that, ha that comes after this will have the character B. Right? What character, what derived characters are we talking about? Opposable thumbs, vertebrate, live birth, wings, or exoskeleton. So you draw the first one here that has everything that comes after it. Uh, B, then everything that comes after it has B, but this organism here would not have B, right? So whatever's here, what is it? Whatever you whatever organism you place here does not have B. Do you see that? And whatever organism you place here. Well, uh, has B and A. It has both A and B. Uh, but maybe it has, uh, it doesn't have C, right? Another derived trait. And after that, you have C coming off. And, um, and, then, uh, and then somewhere down the line, you have another carrot, another branch, because you have something, there's A, there's B, there's C, and here's D. How many do you have? You have A, B, C, D, and E. So you need, a, you need an E. So there's your, uh, let me do that in red. Uh, here's your E. So you have some organism there, some organism here. So you have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You have one, two, three, four, five. So there's only five spots. You have to find other branches. So A has a certain everything after after this has A. Everything after it says B. But maybe you decide that you know there's there's three organisms that have B but not C. Well, they would have something like that, right? This is a complicated tree. You don't have to draw it. So. So uh, there's more efficient ways of drawing this. I'm just kind of doodling on here. And so you would have organism one here that has A but not B. Organisms two, let me go ahead and put numbers on these. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven. And there'll be, there's more, right? There's, there's four and four and four, so there's 12. I only put seven up here, but you'll have to draw your own. You have to place these, So, but remember, everything that comes after this derived trait has B, but if it comes before this derived trait, it doesn't have C. So you'll have to start placing them, and this Venn diagram will help you place them and draw it. And of course, draw it not much neater than I did. I'm, again, I'm just sketching it out here. Uh, then, therefore, if your outgroup would be over here, right? This would be your outgroup. This is the organism or group of organisms that don't have any of these characters. They have none of these characters, these derived characters. The one organism that from this list that would be here in the green. And then you might say, well, maybe at this point, uh, this wouldn't work, though, would it? If you look at it, would this even work where you have... A and everything after it has A, but then there's B and everything after it has B. This would have to have A but not B, all right? And so there's nothing in here <coughs> and everything after it would have to have B. So this actually wouldn't work very well as a, as a Venn diagram for this particular example. So let's just get rid of that and let's look at something that's more realistic for this example. Now, if we take a look at it, we see you still have the outgroup sitting here. The outgroup has has none of these derived characters. So one of these animals does not have any. One of these organisms has not. It does not have any of these uh, derived characters. Uh, however, if we follow the, follow along the line from old oldest to to most recent, there's um, there's a question of. Well, what happens here, exoskeleton uh, derived here, everything after this has an exoskeleton, so 2, 3, and 4 has an exoskeleton, but only 2 and 3 have wings. 
So after this point, everything beyond it has vertebra. None, none of this stuff has vertebra, right? It's just so you can see that this is just a depiction of this kind of logic, of this kind of nesting logic. And so you have this vertebra sitting here. After this, everything has that vertebra. But after this derived trait, everything has live birth. So these four have vertebra, but don't do live birth. Well, there's four of them. You can figure out which one of these have those characteristics. And then after live birth, something, something after this has live birth. Two of them have live birth, but no opposable thumb, right? Because this comes on this branch. If you keep following down this, this tree or up this tree here, you, go, you get to opposable thumb. And there's two organisms on this list that have opposable thumbs and two that have live birth but no opposable thumb. So you can figure out what those are and you can place them. And this is my drawing of the, of, the, of the tree. See if you could come up with different ones that make sense that still, uh, that still follow this rule that everything after the derived trait on this line from oldest to, uh, to more recent, everything after this derived trait has that trait. Anything before it doesn't. So see if we can come up with the most uh, uh, different types of trees, different combinations, and we'll, let's have a nice discussion when we get back. Uh, when I get back on Thursday, uh, good luck on your white coat ceremony. Uh, but let's take here a look at the last question: A species has evolved a new trait is uh, a new trait is not better than a species without a, that trait. Each species has adapt, has adapted to contain uh, uh, to a certain uh, way of life. One when might. When might climbing have been an adaption over walking? When might climbing have been an adaption over walking? And you have to think about what would you need to climb a tree, right? Uh, when, when might climbing have been uh, an adaption for walking? So think about it and see this is a totally uh, a bit of imagination and some thought of what kinds of changes would have happened to make climbing better than walking. All right, I've walked you through this whole activity it's taking, it should take about 20 minutes for you to watch this. Uh, good luck. Get it done. And whatever you don't get done in class, uh, get done for homework, and let's have a nice discussion on Thursday. Again, I'll see you at White Coat Ceremony. Bye.